karma and the purpose of all buddhas is not to give you any information instead to initiate a process of transformation they want to bring a radical change in your consciousness want to change your very roots and they want to bring a new vision a new eye to you a new clarity so the purpose is not to inform you to give you any kind of information or things like this i have heard there was a king he wanted to choose the wisest man as his prime minister so the search went on and finally the search was narrowed to three people he put them into the palace logged into individual rooms and a lock was placed and they were asked to come out of the lock come out of the door the key was not given to them so two of them went into intricate mathematical process and in the process they were able to unlock the lock and came out the third one remained sitting in his chair in meditation doing nothing he came out of the chair turned the knob door opened and he came out we all consider that we are locked into the rooms we are in prison but these are self created door is never locked it is always open but out of our ignorance we consider that the door is locked from times immemorial man has always been intrigued by karma the theory of actions the law its effects and nature in, o- in order to know this it is important to understand how existence has emerged there are two ways either you can begin by looking at our body or look at the atom still there is another way you can look at the universe direct however if you want to begin looking at the universe you will find it very complex it is difficult to begin from that you are not in close proximity where things are happening in the universe it is not like a cricket match that is taking place in a stadium and you can sit down and watch the entire happening from beginning to the end sitting in pavilion or in a vip seat it is very difficult you can only see this as highlights in bits and pieces so what we can see about the existence is only in bits and pieces as highlights if you want to watch an atom it is futile because no one has ever seen an atom are you aware of this even in an advanced microelectronic microscope you cannot see atom certainly you are capable of observing his activities and this scientists have done however we have not seen atom as such scientists have broken it and one thing is peculiar with us we are capable of breaking things even those which we have not seen we are capable of breaking anything and that is the way we live and we are proud of it we can break anything there is no problem in it 
whether it is relationship, this or that, we can break it. However, whether we can make it or not, it is questionable. Certainly we can break anything that we want. What you see and what you do not see itself is very complex. What is that you can really see? If I raise my hand, you can see it. My head, you can see. There is no difficulty in it. Do you know why you can see my hands as I raised it? You can see it only because my hand obstructs the flow of light through it. Hand is opaque. Light cannot pass through my hand or head. As a result, this is as a result of this obstruction, you can see my hand. My hand stops the flow of light. Hand is opaque. Light cannot pass through any object that is opaque. If somehow my hand can allow the light to pass through it, you can see the hand. We can say right now, you can see only those things which have capability to stop the light passing through it. You cannot see things that allow light to pass through. And first of all, you cannot see light by itself. What you see is lighted object and this you consider that you have seen light. A lighted object does not mean light. No ways. You consider that you have seen light when you look at a lighted object. A lighted object means it has capacity to stop the light passing through it. And that is the reason that you can see it. You would like to see all those things that allow light to pass through it. Maybe these are important things. It can be said your visual apparatus at the moment is capable of seeing only those objects that can stop light. That, can, that has the capability to obstruct the flow of light through it. Thus the whole process of seeing life as it is in its original way implies evolving your vision a different kind of eye than you already have. With the current eye you cannot see life as it is. Isn't it so? Because your eyes as it is are capable of seeing only those things, events, circumstances and situations which do not allow the light to pass through it. Thus the whole process of seeing life as it is in its original way implies evolving your vision a different kind of vision than you already have. You require a thoughtless eye. Thoughtless eye, what do you mean? Mean exactly the same thoughtless eyes. As such, your eyes are full of thoughts. And what is thoughts? Thought is memory. Your eyes are full of memory loaded with memory of this and that. Memory is the only guiding factor for your eye to function. If memory is not there, you cannot function. That is what we call the disease Alzheimer's. One loses the control of the memory. Memory is the only guiding factor for your eyes to function. If it in a crowd of hundreds, you find one face familiar that will stand out amidst the crowd and you will notice it. Have you ever noticed this? 
You are walking on this street where hundreds of other people are also walking. Suddenly you spot among the crowd one of your friends. His face will stand clear in the midst of the crowd. It is so because eyes walk with memory. And for that matter, all sense organ work with memory. The, me the more memory you have, better will be the sight. And without memory, you cannot see. You are passing on the street, you are going in a different country. There you do not have the memory. You will not recognize anyone. Everyone is a stranger for you. Memory refers to accumulated past. Something that you have experienced in the past, the remnants of that in the form of information remains and you call this memory. Memory means information. Memory means that which has happened sometimes in the past but does not exist now. However, it acts as if it does exist. It acts as if it does exist. Memories are more real than reality itself, although they do not exist. So something which has happened in the past and is not real now has become a reality for you. Remember one thing. Everything in your life is run by memory. By memory, I do not mean that which is stored in your brain. Your entire body and its every cell carry a memory. Your very body is aggregate of memory. If a man eats a banana or any other fruit, it will certainly become a masculine body. You are eating a banana and you want your body to become feminine, it cannot happen. And if a female eats the fruit, that fruit will become a feminine body. It depends on the stored memory. The memory is not stored in the banana. Memory is stored in the person who eats and whatsoever comes from outside. In a male it becomes masculine, in a female it becomes feminine. The information is stored in the male body, it differs from that which is stored in the female body. And also, even if it's a banana is eaten by two different men. Banana will represent their body. If a black man eats banana, his body will not turn white. And if a white man eats banana, his body will not turn black. Same banana becomes a man in a man and becomes a woman. Suppose on the dining table different people are sitting and in one the food becomes a black skin while in the other it becomes a white skin. The food is the same. It all happens because of the memory that you carry within you. You may not recall your great-great-grandfather. Certainly his nose is sitting on your face and it represents and resembles his. Your body remembers how your forefathers were a million years ago. So what you call body is nothing else but memory. Human eyes are loaded with memory. Eyes which are loaded with memory or is correct with memory cannot see anything the way it is. So 
Firstly, you are born with your eyes loaded with memory. Then, in the process of growth, you are conditioned. The eyes become correct. It will see things as it is convenient because there is a software already installed in it and that is working from within as built-in process. You cannot use Windows in an Apple computer because Apple computer is built in on a different software and Windows or Microsoft is installed with a different kind of system. So each person is installed with a software in the form of memory and this works built in process. This software will not allow any interference or allow to see things other than it is programmed. So, a white man sees things in his own way. I understand once Idi Amin was saying that Jesus is black. And during Christmas time, a lot of religious pictures are sold. I have seen Jesus is being projected as a Rastafarian. How can a Rastafarian expect, accept a white Jesus? Lucky thing animals cannot think the way man does. Otherwise you know what would have happened. Every creature would have depicted God in his own way, if they had their own way. So the memory pattern that has been programmed in you does not allow any interference and this is what we refer as karma or the theory of action traditionally. It is there in your body. It is there in your energy, it affects the way your alchemy reacts. It is there in your brain, head and everywhere. It is there in the physical energy that you carry. It is your memory because you will see each person's energy behave different from that of the other. It is simple because of the memory that one carries. If you want to get rid of this, the process is long. And if somehow you get rid of this, this will result in dismantling of the personality and the body will happen. Still there is another way. And the other way is by creating a distance from it. Just hold it away. From you and when you want to play you play with it you can turn it on when you want and you can switch it off when you want for this an external view is needed but right now your eyes your ears are loaded and conditioned with memory and memory, not ordinary memory, but memory of all kinds. And do not forget your tongue as well. That is also loaded with memory. As a result, you react in a particular way to a particular situation. Why is it so? If you are born in a Chinese family and you visit India, specifically Punjab, you will find food does not taste good because your tongue has a specific memory pattern. Certainly this will be your experience. You have a specific memory pattern of food and when you are served different food, there is reaction and rejection. Even if you eat you will certainly get upset stomach. You may be eating food laden with pepper sauce. 
that fits in your memory pattern, nothing will ever happen to you. On the contrary, if you are given much less spicy East Indian food, your memory pattern will reject it as very spicy and upsetting. The nature of memory is such that it wants same thing again and again, otherwise it will suffer. This memory pattern is nothing else but your past cocoon. It is holding you and will not allow you to move into the present. The food is in front of you, a delicious Thai food in front of you that can give you energy but you are thinking of Chinese food or South Indian food. This food does not fit in your memory pattern. The cocoon of the past holds you and you allow it to do so because it is safer. Whenever problem arises in marriage, life or in any relation, the same cocoon allows you to move to the noon. There you feel safer. It not only feels safe, instead it provides safety. But the safety is nothing but a prison. Safety is another culture name for imprisonment. You are really safe if I lock you in a safe or in a grave because nobody will interfere with you. There is no safer place than grave. There is a problem and you cannot, and the problem is that you cannot get out of that prison out on your own. That is the whole problem. The invisible walls that you have created around you are nothing but self-erected prison walls. Such is the nature of life that you know. It does not matter if you lock yourself from inside or outside, both are same. As long as door remains locked, you remain imprisoned. If someone has locked you from outside, you can at least scream to draw the attention of someone. But if you have locked yourself, then nothing can be done. And we are not aware that we have locked ourselves in our own cocoon of memory and in most of the cases because of the emotional turmoil you lock yourself inside the prison. Thus you are opening the doors of depression. In that situation you can only remain depressed. At whom will you scream? This is the outcome of the memory that has its imprints on all levels, right up to the elemental level. From five elements which function from within, the work of memory begins. So when you use the word karma, it is not simple. Instead, it is a complex process. Some call it as theory of karma. Certainly, I am not talking about the theory of karma. Instead, I am referring to a certain reality. Karma means memory. The past condition, past actions only exist as memory and conditions. Memory is not just what you carry in your brain. Every cell in your body carries its own memory patterns. That's why when you are driving, and you are thinking something else, your physical mind automatically turns the steering wheel towards the room. And this makes it even more complex. This is the reason why one atom behaves different from another atom. It has a memory. Hydrogen atom has one kind of memory, while oxygen atom carries another type of memory. Unless you mix them up, they will continue to behave in their usual manner. It exists in a small circle. 
and you are in somewhat a larger circle. The universe is a still a larger circle, infinitely large circle, but it is the same memory that rules it all. So when we say karma, certainly I am not talking about some concept of philosophy. Instead, I am referring to a certain reality which is finding manifestation as who you are. The very shape and structure of your body is because of your memory. If a bird eats a mango, it becomes bird, not otherwise. If a worm eats mango, it becomes a worm. And if you eat a mango, you will remain a human being. Mango is the same, but it goes on doing infinite things. It all depends on what kind of memory pattern it carries within. If you plant different seeds on the same soil, the end product will be different. The fruits always depend on what the seed carries within as possibilities. In picture, you can see jackfruit tree becoming a banana tree, not otherwise. Each seed carries within its womb a certain memory pattern. It matters not if a fruit seed or a flower seed or your father's seed as that enters the soil of your mother's womb, it is just memory and nothing else. This is karma. And this goes right back to the elemental level. Everything is memory and remains guided by a particular memory pattern. Only the pure element is free from memory. Meditation frees you from the memory pattern and develops a new eye, a new vision, and allows you to see things as they are. Yoga or meditation is the process of developing essentially an eye that is not contaminated by memory. A faculty that simply sees and it does not see things the way your memory perverts it. The eye, this eye that you have, will see things that do not stop the light. This eye will see things that do not stop the light. Whereas your regular eye will see only those things which obstruct the flow of light. If the contrary has happened, you start seeing things that do not stop the flow of light. Another dimension of eye has now begun to function in you. Another dimension. And this is the purpose to remove the existing memory pattern that is there in you, all the contamination that has been given to you in the process of your growth. So the purpose of Buddha is not to give you information, instead to bring about a transformation. Transformation is an altogether different process and that is why sometimes it is difficult. This is the beginning of talks on karma and action, karma and memory. We continue another talk in this series.